you'll hear the term phonological awareness a lot when it comes to teaching kids how to read. So let's take a look at exactly what it is and why it's so important. As well as looking at the what and why of phonological awareness, this video will go into the different skills we need, what success looks like for a kid learning phonological awareness, and how we can best teach kids these skills. Phonological awareness is a vital part of decoding words, or working out what the words say. In order to be able to know what a written word says, our brain needs to be able to convert the word from letter format into sound format. First, it has to break up the word into letters or groups of letters that it can link to sounds. Then it blends those individual sounds together. Now the word's in sound format and their brain can deal with it just like it does if it hears a word. Linking letters and sounds, that's phonics. And blending sounds together is phonological awareness. You've probably already noticed the phon in both these words. Phon comes from the Greek word phone, meaning sound. Not just any sound like Phone means the sounds we use to speak. And from there, we have phonological awareness. Phonological awareness is being aware of the sounds we use to speak. There are actually different parts of speech that we can be aware of. Going from big to small, there are words, Syllables, onset and rhyme, and this is where we divide a syllable in half. Everything before the vowel sound, and the vowel sound, and everything after. So the onset of dog is d, and the rhyme is og. The onset of smash is sm, and the rhyme is ash. And finally, the smallest part, individual sounds we use when we speak, like sh, m, u, or e. The official name for these speech sounds goes back to the word phone. They're called phonemes. So dog has three phonemes, d, o, g. And smash has four. S, m, a, sh. You'll have noticed that the final sh in smash is represented by a group of two letters. But that doesn't matter for phonological awareness. It's only interested in the sounds. In any phonological awareness task, we can ignore the letters and do the task in the dark. The sounds in smash us, m, a, sh. Knowing what letters represent sounds is a different skill. It's the skill of phonics. Because being aware of the individual sounds in speech is so important to reading, it's given its own name, phonemic awareness. It's different to phonological awareness, which is interested in all parts of speech. Phonemic awareness is only interested in the individual sounds, the phonemes. Words, syllables, onset rhyme, and the individual phonemes are the parts of speech that we need to know for phonological awareness. Now let's look at some of the skills that we can do with those parts of speech. Blending. Blend the sounds, d, o, g. Dog. Segmenting. What are the sounds in dog? D, O, G. Isolating. What's the last sound in dog? G. Deleting. Say dog, but don't say D. Og. Or substituting. Say dog, but change the D 
to f fog. Being able to blend, segment, isolate, delete or substitute different parts of speech is the first step to phonological awareness. But it's not the end of the journey. So what does the end goal of phonological awareness look like? In order to be able to know what the words say on a page quickly and effortlessly, kids need to become automatic at phonological awareness skills. This means they need to be able to do the skills instantly and effortlessly. What's dog without the d? Og. No pause, no thinking time. And getting to that point takes teaching and practice. For experienced readers, phonological awareness skills can seem obvious, self-explanatory. But for kids learning, they actually take a huge jump in thinking. What do a monkey, a moon and a mushroom have in common? Not much, except for the sound at the start of the word. When we teach kids phonological awareness skills, we're asking them to ignore all the fun facts they know about monkeys and moons and mushrooms and just think about the sounds of the words. This is a fundamentally different way of thinking about words and it's not something our brains were hardwired to do. And when we teach brains something that they're not hardwired to do, clear, explicit teaching is extremely important. To start, we have to explain and demonstrate exactly what we want them to do. Then we practice together until we can see that they can do it themselves. Finally, when they can do the skill successfully themselves, we give them lots and lots of practice. Enough practice that the skills become automatic. Importantly, while phonological awareness and phonics are two different skills, many children are able to learn them simultaneously by teaching them the links between letters and sounds and then showing them how to blend and segment words with these letters. D -o -g. Dog. But many kids are overwhelmed by this and they need to be taught phonics tasks and phonological awareness tasks separately before being asked to combine the two. Because we don't necessarily know which kid falls into which group when they start to learn, clear explicit teaching of phonological awareness skills for all kids helps every child learn the skills that they need as efficiently and effectively as possible. Phonological awareness is foundational for learning to read. It's what allows kids to put their phonics knowledge to use.